I need a meditative project today, something that's not going to bring me a whole lot of confusion and require a lot of concentration, just restoring something that still has potential back into a functional tool. I found this at my dad's property. That axe head, I don't know, it just looks like it's got some good shape to it, that it's got quality in it somewhere, and just somebody gave up on her. So let's bring her back to life. So this is kind of like, a, I don't even know what it's called exactly, but I got it from, I think, knife making website. It's kind of like a scotch bite pad with like a honing abrasive kind of compound mixed into the fibers. And it's really good at just uh, cleaning up steel. It kind of abrades the steel, but really minor. So it's great for taking off rust and like forge scale, but not actually removing a lot of steel. So I think I'm gonna need something with a little more uh, Standing power. It's funny, this side of the axe looks pretty kind of factory smooth, but then this side is a lot chunkier. I don't know if somebody was grinding that or if those are old forge marks. Hard to tell. It looks like there's still some old paint on it, maybe from the original. Kind of like a yellowy and then a greeny blue color. The only mark I can see on it is a this three and a half with like a real looks like an S, a backwards S. Leave a comment down below if you're an axe junkie and you know what type of axe blade this is. It's definitely uh, pretty old from what I'm guessing here. Oxidized rust, whatever, is not coming off. I might need to soak it in some evaporust. I don't know if there's a, some sort of a mixed portion with this, but see if that says anything. Well, we got her out of the evaporust here. Still pretty pitted. I think I'm going to kind of regrind the surfaces on this. 
just to really clean it up, clean up these bottom edges here. Now something obviously happened to this axe, these big divots in it here, and it looks like there's some kind of grinder marks. I don't know if they've tried to patch a with some weld or something. Does that look like welds that have been ground down? But what I did notice, and I had a hunch, was right there is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's an SW, which I'm guessing is Sweden. A lot of these axes would be stamped Sweden. There's also a W with like a, a circle, partial circle around it here. I don't know if that's a maker's mark. But I've seen lots of axes with this Sweden on it, right? Which means that this is good quality steel made in Sweden. So I could tell just by the shape of it, it had, had some sex appeal. So I knew it was a decent axe when I saw it all rusted up. Time for the hair test. It will shave. <laughs> Not bad. Time to put a handle on this beast. So I picked up a piece of six quarter ash. You want the grain to be flat sawn. So the growth rings are going like this or like that, not vertical. Right, because the, the direction of the grain, you want to be along the profile of the handle. That makes the wood stronger, less prone to crack or split and break. So I picked out a nice piece of flat grain. Growth rings are kind of going like this. And we're gonna go with a 30 inch handle because I'm a pretty tall guy, six foot six. So I got some long limbs the handle size that was on it before was 28 so that would be pretty standard uh, i'm just going to add a two inches just for me and cut it a little big I kind of, I do have to say, I like the, the feel of this handle. Like it is just a factory kind of mass produced handle. The, the palm swell is definitely needs a bit more. It's not bad, but you can see this kind of cracks in this handle. It was definitely toast. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of trace the profile. It actually, I grabbed this piece of wood because the wood grain actually kind of follows an ax handle shape. So maybe that'll make it even stronger. I don't know, probably not. And I think I might just add like just a little bit more curve to it. But I'll start by just having this thing as a little guide.
pretty sexy to me. Let's take it to the bandsaw. So you want to sight down the blade and make sure that it's lined up centered with your handle here before you trace that profile. Now we take the draw knife to her. Just realized I don't have my draw knife here. I left it up at my cabin, so I need to. Well, I got my handles ready, my wedge is ready. So you want to make sure that your wedge is kind of just going to span the head there. It's, this one has a slight taper on it, right, so that the wedge just fits right in at the bottom there. Okay, it's not going to fit all the way in because you want it to be really tight. You're hammering it in there, right? So it will compress some. So got my little slot cut in the handle. And then the wedge goes in. So I'm gonna put a bead of glue in here. Get the head seated on there really good. Get the wedge started into the crack. And then uh, there's a number of different ways. Some people use like a block or a big hammer. I found that you can crack these if you're hitting it with a hammer. So I'm gonna put it upside down on my anvil over there and then hit the handle down. I've seen that that works pretty well for getting nice even compression into the head there. So that's how I'm gonna do it.
make sure you got good contact all the way around, no gaps. Deeper than that. Put some Odie's Oxy Oil on here. This oil kind of darkens the wood over time. I get a lot of questions about finishes and which finishes to use for woods, and I've tried them all over the years. And what I've settled on is Odie's Oil. It's a universal finish, it can go on pretty much anything. And it has that beautiful, natural hand rub look that I love on all my projects. So stop asking me about finishing because the only finish I use is Odie's oil. If you want to get yourself a jar, just click the link in the description below. So I put a coat of Odie's on it last night and I'm going to throw another coat on today. I want that handle to be nice and protected. One of the things I love about Odie's oil is that because it's all natural and you don't have toxic stuff in here, it's food safe, solvent free, you know, you don't even have to worry about it getting on your hands, you know? That's way too much. And a little goes a long way. Sure you get the uh, end grain at the end of the handle too. And your hands smell like they just got back from the spa. Actually better than the spa. Mm, so good. What are you doing, honey? Uh, just watching a guy smell his fingers. Once you have Odie's oil, you'll understand. You're constantly just like, oh, it smells so good. I want to bathe in it. Oh, yeah, let that cure.